Hello my YouTube fans. Um, this video is essentially in response uh, to a um, comment on, on my solar um, projection video, one of my solar project, no, on, on my solar eclipse video, the one where I show the software I believe. Well he was, uh, Danny D I believe his name is, he was telling me that uh, he saw my other projection videos and um, was interested in using his Jason uh, 60 millimeter aperture uh, 600 millimeter focal length telescope to project it asking me whether or not um, this would be a good telescope to try and get an image or as clear as the one I get I would say yes uh, the only thing I want to stress um, is, well there's many things I want to stress first uh, let me uh, let me get rid of that um, this is a viewfinder for my telescope it's actually a small telescope in itself. Now, I don't know if the one on your telescope is a small telescope or if it's just a hole, but either way, if that can be removed, um, by all means, do so. Uh, it is not needed, and you, would, you are not going to line up the telescope by looking at the sun. You're going to use the shadow of the telescope to shine on the ground to, to line up the sun. Uh, this is very important because, you know, any time you, any time that you even accidentally look at the sun, unprotected, you're going to have trouble with your eyes. And um, especially since these small tele, these viewfinder scopes are sitting there attached to the telescope, uh, and if you don't have the objective covered, and I say the objective, I mean the front of the scope. If you could follow my mouse arrow, covered, uh, there's a danger in 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 burning something and. You know, somebody looking through it, and and believe me, if you have this off and this one on, that's the front, the, the eyepiece part on. It's just that's just going to burn a hole through that through that cover. So you need the objective cover on, or if you can, like I can here, remove the um, viewfinder scope altogether. Um, somebody else asked, what are the dangers? Uh, you know, of, of the of the heating up of the elements of the telescope, damaging damaging the eyepieces. I would say that uh, between the star diagonal, which is what this is, it allows you to put an eyepiece in this instead of straight through the telescope so you can view it easier. I use it anyway because I project the sun at an angle into the shadow of the house so that we can see it better. Um, and I would say that, you know, I've projected the sun before, obviously for all those of you who have seen my, my solar projection videos, um, i projected it before. And so far as I can tell, I haven't damaged anything. However, I must admit that uh, the time, amount, of, the amount of time that I had the the projection going was a matter of minutes. And sometimes I would cover the 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 the, the objective lens and then uncover it, you know, just in case. But I think more of the danger probably lies in the eyepiece, which I don't know if I have a picture of here. Um, while I'm, while I'm looking for it, I'll remind everybody that never look directly at the sun. Through your telescope or its viewfinder scope, even for an instant, without professionally made solar filter that completely covers the front of the instrument, or permanent damage, or permanent eye damage could result. And I say, no, not could result. Will re will result. You will go blind if you look through a telescope at the sun without any protection. And this is well. Well, I'll, uh, I just want to say, and I say, this is the front of the telescope. The objective, as you can see, there's a secondary cap here. I could use that to diminish the aperture to let less light in to help protect my uh, eyepiece. Okay, that's the front of the scope. Um, let me just say that when I say proper solar filter, I don't mean these things. Um, and and Danny D, uh, looking up your telescope, I think your telescope may be one of those telescopes. It might be an ancient telescope with one of these filters in it. Do not use this filter. What happens is that this this solar filter goes in the eyepiece, right where the focus of the objective lens goes. Which means that this thing is going to get hot, and it's going to get hot fast. Okay, it will crack. It will crack, and you try to look through it, and you're going to end up going. You're going to come smoke coming out of your eyes. Throw this thing away. Do not use it. And I know that you're you're asking about projection, so I, I applaud you for wanting to project the sun. Please do not look at the sun, and if, especially if you have kids around, 
make sure that they do not attempt to look through that telescope while you have it pointed at the sun. Okay, so um, yeah, danger. Okay, so here's here's an example of one of my pictures from uh, a while. I'm going to be having this this uh, um, this uh, screen that I made out of cardboard with the poster board in the back, sitting on a table with a black cloth on it instead of this green thing. So it'll be a bit better at uh, blocking some of the ambient light. Um, so this is the kind of image I'm going to be getting, which is going to be really cool to watch the solar eclipse with. So as you can see, um, I don't have the finder scope on this telescope. All right, And the way you find the sun, now this is without any eyepiece in or anything, it's just the objective lens. I'm basically p pointing the telescope at the sun, and I'm looking at the shadow. So the telescope is pointed at the sun, so I can align it. I will then lay, of course, I would then put the objective cap on, so that I can set up the rest of it while not getting burned. See, I'll put the the, the, the dust cover cap on, you know, the, and then and then set up the rest of the telescope. Again, here's what I did it again, with the cover on it, and uh, you can see that the shadow literally is a silhouette of the telescope face on. So I know that it's lined up with, with the uh, sun. Don't do not attempt to try and look at the sun and line up the telescope that way. It does not work, and you will go blind. Okay. So again, remove the finder scope if you can't. Make sure that at least that the front cap is covered. If you don't have a cap for the front of it, make one. As long as the front of the telescope or the viewfinder scope is covered, there'll be no light going through the thing. Okay, this is a solar filter that is for the front of the objective lens of my telescope. Actually, I, I actually looked this one up. This is actually for my telescope. This actually fits over the, the objective lens of my telescope, and this is before the sunlight gets into the instrument, not after, not after it's been focused by by the objective lens. This is before it even reaches the objective lens. That's very important. I want you to understand the difference. Okay. So, you know, I don't know what else to tell you, except that you could almost use any, any telescope. You could use a pinhole camera, but of course the image you get uh, is very tiny. But you could use any telescoping device to project the sun, as long as you're careful not to look through it, and you're careful to cover any other, you know, uh, scopes that are attached to it and stuff like that. For example, you could even use a pair of binoculars. I would recommend either covering one objective of the binocular and use one side and it's five o'clock. <laughs> um, or, or have a double image or however you do it. But again, even a pair of binoculars works. Um, a spotting scope, anything really works. I could tell you that the reflecting telescopes are, it's not recommended that you use a reflector uh, for the simple reason that the the reflectors have more elements in them and more places to heat up and more dam you know more more devices inside the telescope that can get damaged by by the heat refractors are uh, generally speaking um, you know a little bit better at, at projecting the sun but uh, uh, for the purposes of not damaging the scope but I, like I said you use the cheapest and the lowest power eyepiece by the way um, unfortunately for me, um, it used to be that they, you know, when you bought a telescope like this, they used to give you um, not the most expensive eyepieces, and the plossels used to be the more expensive ones. But uh, eyepieces have have uh, evolved in the days uh, of when I first owned my, owned my first telescope, and I no longer have the orthoscopic eyepieces. They came with plossel eyepieces. Now plossel eyepieces, I don't have a, a, an image here to show you, but if you look them, if you look the eyepieces up. Um, let me see if I have any pictures here. I, don't, I guess I don't have any pictures here, but um, if you look the the uh, um, types of eyepieces up, you'll find that plossels have a lot of elements. So, like I said, the more elements, the more pieces of glass, and the more adhesives and more glues and stuff like that they use within the uh, the manufacturing of, of the eyepiece, the more places that the sunlight can heat up and possibly damage. But this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, so I'm going to take that chance and I'm probably going to try to see if, if I can just use this diameter here. Um, if it doesn't 
if it doesn't dim instead of the full aperture if it doesn't dim the the um, oops if it doesn't dim the image too much if I still get a bright enough image to project it this big um, I, I'll be satisfied if not I'll open up the aperture you know maybe uh, for a few minutes at a time and close it off and open it again but um, what's important is that you remember to remove this or cover the objective of it if you can't remove it if you're going to look through the telescope you absolutely positively must have a solar filter a a professional solar filter over the objective of the lens of the telescope this is the objective okay that filter goes over this okay so not not after not at the eyepiece because at the eyepiece is going to be where the heat is it's going to be where the sun is focused you know if you're ever a kid and used to like to take a magnifying glass and start fires on leaves and burn ants and things like that this is what this is this is not just a simple magnifying glass this is an, a, a very um, well-made achromatic that is it's a double it's two glass two two different kinds of glass designed to to you know uh, better focus all of the light down the tube to the point somewhere around this point right here and if you're gonna put a filter in there you're gonna have a problem you're gonna have smoke and and destruction of your eye so that's basically what's important as far as what telescope you use like I said you can use almost anything um, the um, the telescope that you mentioned I looked up and I don't have a picture over here I, I noticed if, if, if it's the same one if I got the right one it looks like a basic equatorial mount or it might be at altazimuth I'm not sure well the main thing is going to be stabilization if you if, if you, there's a way to tighten it up and to move it as the, as the earth spins you need you're going to need to follow the Sun as it as it sets as it starts to go down and you're going to follow the eclipse that's that's going to be the main um, um, hassle with with that type of telescope it's going to be being able to constantly adjust it as the earth moves which by the way is another reason why you want to use the lowest power eyepiece possible um, the higher power you go the faster the image moves out of the view so you want to use the lowest power possible and uh, that you have and this way the image won't move so fast out of the field of view and you won't have to adjust it every few seconds you know so I think that's it. Uh, I'm mainly concerned about safety. I'm mainly concerned about anybody who watches my videos gets the gets the uh, the message. Now you may be wondering, so why isn't that screen burning? Well, that's because the the image is spread out. That's about 15 or more inches in diameter, maybe even 18 inches in diameter. If I were to bring that closer to the telescope, to the eyepiece, the closer I get, the smaller the image get, the more concentrated the light is, to the point where I could literally light a cigarette off of the tip of that. And uh, I've demonstrated that once before. Only I didn't use cigarettes in there because I quit smoking, so I used a piece of paper. I demonstrated that I can actually get the paper to smoke, bringing it close enough. So um, the projection is basically the safest way, as long as you remember never to look through the telescope. And uh, if you're gonna look at the sun directly, because it's you know it's it's a cool thing to do, make sure you have the the solar filters, the glasses that they were given away at libraries, which by the way I didn't get. I finally had to find a place to buy them, and I did finally buy some. Um, actually, I think my my uh, camera is on. I did manage to buy these. I found them at a 7-Eleven. These are ordained by the proper companies. I don't know if you're actually seeing that because I can't see myself on the screen right now but um, I'll back up a little bit and I'll sort of wave it around a bit these are the Sun catchers okay and inside here you'll see uh, um, con uh, conforms to the ISO and the other um, safety regulation uh, I'm pulling it out okay they come two in a pack so I got one here and one here. So uh, on the back, 
it's in fine print. I don't think I can. And the company is um, um, Explore Scientific LLC. So that is one of the ordained companies. And I'm looking at this right now. And it looks like I got some specs on it. I got, you're supposed to be able to inspect this to make sure that there's no damage. It looks like it was just some hair. So on the back, and again, I don't know if you're seeing this because I don't have on the view. I don't think I can stop the video and switch over to full camera. So it is written back here and the company's written back here. These are safety now. These are these are proper safety glasses. Now you don't when you put these on, this is what you're gonna do. I'm gonna try to demonstrate. If the if my camera was the sun, what I would do is I would I would take these, I would put them on first. And, and I like because of the way my shape of my head and I get a lot of light outside of it I like to cover my the sides and then I then I would look up towards the Sun I don't know if I'm actually looking at the camera right now because I can't see a damn thing <laughs> it's, they're that dark and when you get up to the Sun you, with these on you'll see the Sun looks like a little orange ball it's it's quite a, a thing to behold but uh, that's how these are used and then when you want to take them off you look down and take them off okay so be sure to uh, do the proper thing and if you have kids around make sure you have these glasses and tell if you don't have them if you don't have the proper filters um, make sure that they understand they are not to look at the Sun and uh, projection that you're going to give is going to be a beautiful thing you'll be able to sit around and have somebody barbecue while you're you're controlling the telescope and uh, and uh, watch the watch the moon partially cover I think you said you're in uh, North Carolina you're going to be able to see a better partial eclipse than I'm going to get. I'm going to get about 75%, I think. Um, you may get a little bit more, I think, in North Carolina. But uh, as you can see by the image that you're seeing on the screen right now, it's a beautiful thing to see even on the screen. And to watch the moon cover even partially would be a cool thing to see. Unfortunately, we're not. I'm not going to be able to see the total eclipse. I've never seen the corona, except for on videos and pictures, of course, on the computer. Uh, but to behold something like that in person would obviously be a, a, a cool thing to see. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that. But I'm going to do what I can to see at least a partial. And I'm crossing my fingers and my toes for uh, a clear day. You know, uh, at least clear enough to, uh, to uh, have the sun show through and, um, and project it onto the screen. And I wish you luck. And again, Danny, yes, the telescope is fine for projecting. You could even use something lesser than that, as long as you can make sure that whatever part is available to accidentally look through is covered. Um, again, if it's the if you can't remove if you can't remove the the um, viewfinder make sure that you have a cover over the front of it I believe by the pictures that I saw of your telescope at least I think that was the right one I believe yours is removable so I would recommend you just not even put it on in the first place if it's already on take it off okay and to line up the telescope again you uh, use the shadow method like you see here okay I don't know what else to say except uh, good luck in getting this projected and, and I hope uh, I hope uh, everybody stays safe. Make sure that you, uh, you know, anybody who's uh, viewing it with you um, understands the dangers of looking at the sun. And, uh, and I hope your projection um, solar eclipse uh, party goes well. Thank you for watching. And uh, it's going to take me a second to stop this video. So please subscribe. And thank you for watching.